Good evening, I'm Yvonne Staff for Science for the Public, and I welcome you to Contemporary Science Issues and Innovations. Tonight, we have a special treat, how science fiction has anticipated and inspired a good number of things in science. Our guest, David Toomey, is a professor of English literature at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, and he's also the co-director of the English Department's Professional Writing and Technical Communications Program. He's a prize-winning author of a number of science books for the general public. A few years ago, Dr. Toomey discussed uh, some of his books, one of which was on time travel. Tonight, Dr. Toomey discusses science fiction and some of the discoveries, concepts, and issues that have shaped modern life and modern science. This presentation is via a distance connection, and it is a great honor to welcome David Toomey once again. Okay, I'm going to talk about um, the role of science fiction and how it has influenced scientists and engineers. Many people have discussed this before and talked about this before, so this is going to be my own take, and it's probably like a bit uh, idiosyncratic. Um, um, E.M. Forster wrote a short story called the machine stops and machine stops is about a world in which most people live underground and they live in cells and communicate with each other mostly via uh communicate mostly via kind of a video hookup they live for the most part alone they are isolated and most of the human population is doing this the uh the machine stops in many ways anticipated the internet culture that we live in and even predicted social and emotional isolation what's astonishing about the machine stops is the year it was written 1909 uh this is uh well before the advent of television and um a century before the advent of the world wide web and the internet so what what's to be said here science fiction really can anticipate not just technology but technological problems or social problems um we're human problems that are uh, uh produced by technology some of which are anticipated unanticipated i mean so uh let's back up a bit um a definition of science fiction be a good place to start science fiction is fiction whose plot turns or pivots on or is somehow based on a scientific fact or principle or perhaps theory. It differs from fantasy in this respect. In fantasy, no scientific explanation is needed when a dragon produces fire out of its mouth or a person uh, uh, puts on an invisibility cloak. That kind of stuff probably not accepted in most science fiction and most uh, science fiction uh, science fiction purists wouldn't uh, allow it um so uh let, i want to just talk through a few uh rather well-known science fiction stories and novels that did uh that uh, whose uh, whose subjects whose uh, whose predictions have since been realized um one of uh, one of them, uh, one of the most famous, many people know already, is Arthur C. Clarke, made famous, probably most famous, by his novel 2001, A Space Odyssey, and his film, the film he, he uh, co-wrote, whose script, I should say, he co-wrote with Stanley Kubrick, 2000, also of the same name, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Uh, Clarke was a, an author of science fiction who began writing in what's called the golden age of science fiction, that is the late 1930s and uh, mid, uh, from beginning in the late 1930s and, and continuing through the late 1940s. Um, Clark uh, predicted many things. Among, well, one of them is something we called, um, well, one of them is the place we put communication satellites. Uh, it is geosynchronous orbit. That is an orbit over the equator in which a satellite makes a single orbit in a day, thus remaining over the same spot on Earth for, well, for as long as it's in orbit. So when you're on Earth and you look at that satellite, it doesn't seem to be moving. 
Clark called it a Clark orbit, and many people after him have called it a Clark orbit. He joked that he should have patented the idea. Not sure you can patent something like that. But um, but anyway, uh, at any rate, we 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 do owe uh, the uh, the introduction of that idea to uh, to a science fiction writer. Um, that's uh, one might say a positive effect of science fiction. There are not so positive effects of science fiction. Another um, a writer, a famous writer of the golden age, is of course Isaac Asimov. Asimov is famous among other things for. Uh, his books and novels about the robots, the robot series. And he uh, dealt, many of his stories involved robots that uh, somehow had an effect, not always a positive effect on humans. And um, many, um, he um, introduced something he called the laws of robotics, that is laws that uh, we as a society would have to introduce if we were to uh, allow robots to have um, uh, uh, some play in our everyday lives. This, these, this is the three laws of robotics quoted from the Handbook of Robotics, 56th edition, um, 2058 AD. I happen to have a copy with me. Uh, three laws here. First law, a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Second law, a robot must obey the orders given it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Third law, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. Now, um, since uh, uh, since uh, Asimov uh, wrote that, um, alas, people have been killed by robots. The first person killed by an industrial robot uh, lost his life in 1979, and there have been more since. And of course, this the um, the issues raised by this are the issues raised by autonomous uh, automobiles, um, and so we're hearing a lot about this these days. And we're likely to continue to hear more about this. Um, speaking of robots, incidentally, um, a lot of recent science fiction, the, the 2013 movie Her involves a human being who falls in love with an artificial intelligence played by Scarlett Johansson. Uh, the movie, again, is called Her 2013. Uh, this would seem to be a rather new idea. It's surprisingly not. Uh, Lester Del Rey in 1938 published a story called Helen Oloy about uh, an inventor who creates a female robot and uh, proceeds to fall in love with her. It's a love story between um, a man and a robot. Um, uh, again, uh, that was uh, surprisingly 1939. Um, Science fiction of the 50s and 60s. Well, the science fiction of the Golden Age in the 50s and 60s, beyond the Golden Age, was on the, on the most part optimistic. I'm making a generalization there. there. There is some very dystopian science fiction in that era, too. But on the whole, I think it's fair to say it was optimistic. And um, the uh, protagonists of the stories met with problems they could solve with a little knowledge of thermodynamics or orbital mechanics. Uh, engineering of some sort. So uh, many of them had happy endings. And maybe it's not surprising that Elon Musk, uh, founder of SpaceX, um, and, um, and uh, Jeff Bezos, founder of Blue Origin, were both science fiction fans as, uh, as teenagers and, and were much influenced, and we'll say they're much influenced by the science fiction of, of the 1960s. Um, uh, whatever else you might want to say about them, they are optimists. So this optimism, uh, this optimism continues, and I'm speaking generally here well into the 1960s. And in many ways, uh, Star Trek uh, embodied that. Uh, the Star Trek, I'm, I'm speaking here, the classic Star Trek, the uh, what fans of Star Trek call the classic Star Trek, the series, the first series that began in 1966. Um, it was uh, determinedly optimistic. Um, it involved, as we all know, peoples uh, from Earth, a range of ethnicities and races, and of course, not uh, only a united Earth, but a united Federation of planets, and peoples not only from Earth, but from other planets, uh, uniting to 
as it were, uh, seek out new life, new civilizations, and also solve a lot of problems on the way. Um, the um, Star Trek uh, influenced uh, many scientists and engineers, and, and will uh, uh, and, and they will say this. One, one Star Trek fan uh, was a young African American woman named Mae Jemison, and Mae Jemison was particularly inspired by the character Lieutenant Uhura, also African American. Jemison would become a NASA astronaut, and in 1992 she flew a aboard the space shuttle Endeavour, becoming the first uh, African-American woman to, uh, to enter space. Uh, a lot of engineers will talk about uh, how Star, Star Trek influenced them, and many Star Trek technologies have been realized. Many of them, we might say, are design technologies, uh, not so much technical. That is, the communicators of Star Trek are uh, a, a kind of a flip uh, flip phone design, the, um, the, the screen in sick bay above the, uh, above the beds in sick bay, uh, are a design, but you will see these in many intensive care, uh, units and, uh, and many hospitals nowadays. Um, other ideas from Star Trek that is faster than light travel and teleportation, uh, of course, are not realized and perhaps may never be realized, but there are physicists who are thinking about these. So, in fact, they are, um, they are discussed in some, deal, in, in some detail, at least in theoretical papers. Uh, so the um, uh, science, fiction, science fiction of the 1970s uh, in some ways moved away from this optimism into some darker territory. You had authors like... Harlan Ellison and Philip K. Dick exploring um, the uh, dangers of technology and society somehow gone wrong, uh, all manner of dystopias. Uh, you also had um, uh, a number of women writers began to uh, uh, enter the field, make the mark in the field this time too. Ursula Le Guin, Margaret Atwood, Atwood thought to be a mainstream writer who, who did who does write I think most would say um, science fiction as well um, and uh, a lot of um, a lot of what they were talking about uh, we're seeing more and more of I mean a lot of what they're talking about is seen more and more in science fiction uh, of our own time uh, the uh, problems with uh, privacy and electronic age the degradation of the environment, all manner of dystopia. And of course, this science fiction, of course, is not limited to short stories and print or uh, novels and short stories. Uh, it's um, a lot of it is uh, on television and, of course, in movies now. And the Netflix series Black Mirror um, does a lot, explores these, um, as the title suggests, these darker issues. Um, in, in more detail. Uh, but the science fiction 30s and 40s, and even right into the 50s, was uh, kind of a literary backwater. Some would call it a kind of literary backwater. It, has, it wasn't uh, respectable by the, respect, much respected by the literary establishment insofar as there is one. Um, and that has changed as well. A lot of uh, what you'd call the mainstream writers even writers who are respected by the literary establishment are writing uh, what anyone would call science fiction. Um, so uh, a lot of the golden age science fiction isn't lost. All, I should also say it's not lost. A lot of it is being revived and presented in, uh, in television scripts and film scripts. Um, Asimov's I, Robot, uh, was a film starring uh, Will Smith just a few a, a few years back, and um, the um, uh, Arthur C. Clarke's Childhood's End uh, was made into a series. So nothing seems to be lost. They are um, television and movies are really going through the old stuff, making because so much of it, frankly, is very good. Um, but we're seeing. Um, uh, more science fiction, as I said, gone mainstream. The reasons for this may be complex, or may, maybe they're not. One reason is certainly that 
the readers of science fiction, the fans of science fiction are now adults and in positions of power so they can do it. Uh, another reason may be simply that we are living in a world that seems more and more like science fiction. Uh, uh, technological change is, uh, is, is happening at, a, at an increasingly greater rate. And we, uh, science fiction may comfort us in some odd way in that it uh, allows us to anticipate the change, get ready for it, adapt to it, or you might say uh, pre-adapt to it. Um, but um, it's always been influential, and uh, if current trends continue, looks as though they will for a while, it's likely to stay very influential. Thank you.